Hi everybody, welcome back to our Facebook page. My name is Tara, I'm one of our marine education specialists here at the Chesapeake Bay National Estuarine Research Preserve in Virginia. And if you joined us last week, you tuned into our educational program where we learned about the importance of wetlands. And this week we're bringing you another educational opportunity where we're gonna be learning about sea turtles. Um, we're gonna be learning about the life cycle of turtles and the threats that they face because they do live a pretty tough life. Um, and just like last week, we are going to be reading a story first for some of our younger audience members. And we're going to be doing an activity following that story. This one's going to be a little interactive so you guys can actually play from home. So we'll go ahead and get started. So this week's story is called Turtle, Turtle, Watch Out. It's written by April Sayer. And all of the illustrations are going to be done by Amy Patterson. So this is going to give us a great introduction on the struggles that a sea turtle faces from those early life stages all the way to adulthood. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Late one night on a beach in Florida, a baby turtle story begins. It could be a short story or no story at all, if not for helping hands. Turtle is only an egg now. Her mother's flippers cover her with sand. Hungry raccoons watch, and when mother turtle crawls back to sea, furry feet scurry, noses sniff, paws dig. Turtle, turtle, watch out. Young hands holding a flashlight scare the bandits away. They place wire mesh around the turtle nest to protect the buried eggs. Morning comes, so does a jeep. It speeds towards the eggs. Turtle, turtle, watch out. The Jeep stops. Hands have put up a painted sign. No driving on the beach, the sign says. The Jeep leaves. The turtle nest is safe and undisturbed. Turtle seats none of this from inside her shell. Two months later, Turtle begins to tear her leathery eggshell. She rips it open with a special tooth. She rocks and wiggles to escape. Then she rests, still half in her shell. Her yolk sac attached to the bottom of her shell shrinks as her body absorbs its energy. A day later, nudging and pushing, she and the other hatchlings dig towards the surface. They scramble, then rest, scramble, then rest. Their upward journey takes three whole days. <clears throat> Finally, on a moonlit August night, Turtle peeks out of the sand. Other hatchlings below her are pushing her upward. All around her, the hatchlings dig out. Pushing against the sand, Turtle crawls across the beach. Go to the light. That's all Turtle knows. At night, the brightest light should be over the horizon. Tonight, it is not. Turtle crawls towards the wrong light, shining from across the street. Turtle, Turtle, watch out. Small hands switch off the light. Turtle turns and crawls the other way. She scurries towards the ocean waves. Step by step, she journeys down the beach. Animals gather, night herons, cats, and raccoons. They're hungry and are here to eat the hatchlings. Turtle, turtle, watch out. Quickly, Turtle scoots to the water. Whoosh. Water picks her up and carries her seaward and then pushes her back towards the beach. Whoosh. Waves tumble her tiny body, then carry her to sea again. She pushes her flippers. She can swim. She swims past hungry fish. Currents catch her and carry her far from shore. For months, she drifts in patches of seaweed. She dines on tiny plants and animals. She grows. Currents carry her thousands of miles, circling an ocean wide, until one day she leaves the floating sargassum, a, mat, a mass of algae. <laughs> she begins to swim past islands, past sailfish, past humpback whales. She reaches a coral reef where she spies a tasty jellyfish. Turtle, turtle, watch out. Splash. Quick hands dip down, grabbing the plastic bag. It looks like a jellyfish, but it's not. It could choke a turtle or clog its belly. 
turtle swims onward. She looks for other food. As she grows, her jaws crack over open conchs, crabs, and clams. For 20 years, this is her turtle life until one day she feels restless. It's time for her to travel far and fast. She flaps her flippers like underwater wings. She swims and swims past ships, sailing and sunken. Three sharks see her. Turtle, turtle, watch out. The sharks pursue her. No hands can help her now. She swims faster and faster and finally escapes. But she does not see a shrimper's net rushing towards her. Turtle, turtle, watch out. In an instant, she is swept into a net. It drags her down and down. She needs the surface to breathe. The boat pulls, tumbling her to the back of the net. She's almost out of air when she slips through an escape hatch. She's free. Months before, weathered hands had sewn that hatch onto the net just so sea turtles could escape. Shaken but safe, Turtle swims on. She meets a male turtle and they mate. Later, under a summer moon, Turtle swims towards the breaking waves. Thud! Her heavy body hits the hard shore. It is the same beach where she hatched, but now things are different. Now she's a mother turtle about to lay her eggs. One day those eggs will hatch. The tiny turtles will begin their journeys, scrambling across the sand. And some will make it with a little luck and fast moving flippers and the help of many hands. So again, Turtle, Turtle, Watch Out, great book. It does give us a great outline of the life of a sea turtle, which we're gonna talk about in just a moment, and some of those encounters that she had along the way. So we, before we get into our activity, I do wanna give you guys a little background information. So sea turtles are one of my favorite animals to talk about, and hopefully one of yours as well. Um, but when we talk about sea turtles, there are seven species that are found all over the world. And you might see here this little blue shadow here. So this is Archelon. He's actually a ancient extinct sea turtle species. But we do find the rest of these currently today. Um, the largest being our leatherback sea turtle here. Um, they're personally my favorite species. They can be upwards to 800 pounds, sometimes even more. Um, and here in the southeast United States, we see a few of these species, mainly loggerheads, sometimes a green or a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Um, but they do vary in size, and of course they vary in where they're found all over the world. But something they all have in common is they have the exact same life cycle. And they talked about this in the book, of course. So they are reptiles, sea turtles are. So they do lay eggs. So that mama turtle is gonna come on the beach, dig her egg chamber, and deposit on average around 120 eggs. And they usually sit there for around two months, and once they emerge from that eggshell, they're considered little adorable hatchlings. So those hatchlings are gonna make their way across that beach into the water, and for the first about eight to 10 years of their life, they're gonna be considered juvenile sea turtles. So they're going out to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean in that Sar um, Sargasso Sea, where they have all this brown algae. Um, they find a lot of their food items there during the beginning of their time. Now, once they get bigger in size, they're gonna be looking for bigger prey items and they're gonna be considered that sub-adult. So we're getting a little bit older towards our um, late teens, early 20s. And then once they reach about 30 years old, we're gonna have adult sea turtles. So this is when we'll see those females come onto shore and start laying eggs. And then of course that begins our whole life cycle all over again. Now in the book, it did a great job of outlining some threats that sea turtles have. Um, so I do wanna ask you guys, can you guys think of any threats that um, sea turtle eggs might face? So the ones that are buried in that sand pit or that a hatchling might face while they're on that beach before they even make it to the water. Um, and we do have some examples to share with you guys. So some common threats to our eggs and our hatchlings, the first one they mentioned in the book 
were animals. So on the beaches, we do find things like raccoons. I call them little trash pandas. I think they're adorable. Um, but they do have a great sense of smell and they can dig up those eggs pretty easily. There are other threats, of course. So these two images here kind of relate to beach development or beach erosion. Um, and with beach development, you see a lot of white light. So these might be people's houses, hotels have bright white lights, and that can cause a lot of confusion for our turtles. So they do like to follow that moon, it's kind of the way they orient themselves to the ocean. So if they see a bright white light, even from something like a flashlight, it can cause a lot of issues for them. So you can actually use red amber lights and that doesn't confuse our sea turtles. They don't recognize that color like that bright white light. And of course, storms can be a problem, especially in the late summer months, we might encounter some hurricanes a little further south than um, Virginia, um, but those can wash out nests. So that can definitely be a problem for our, um, our eggs and sometimes even our hatchlings. Now, now that they're getting bigger in size, can you guys think of any threats? So again, this can be natural threats or this can be human factors that might threaten our sea turtles once they make it out into the open ocean. And again, we have some examples. So these are all um, examples, both natural and human, that can cause some trouble for our larger sea turtles. Um, the first one they talked about were definitely plastics. So unfortunately, a lot of sea turtles do get plastics confused for things like jellyfish, other food items, and that can cause entanglement issues. They can ingest it and that can be a huge problem for them. So we always ask to make sure that we're not entering trash and other plastic items into their environment so they don't get confused with that. Um, they also talked about the nets, so shrimper nets, um, trawl nets, a lot of them will have a turtle excluder device. So that's that little escape hatch. And that allows our sea turtle to scoot on out of that net without being drowned or anything. Um, so that's a great thing that a lot of organizations are doing are including those turtle excluder devices. We ask people during the summer months especially to definitely be aware when they're on the water in boats. So sea turtles are coming closer to shore to feed and to nest and they do pop their head up out of the water to take a nice breath of air. So we wanna make sure we're not having any issues there, any accidents. And a natural predator to our sea turtles, especially our larger sea turtles are gonna be sharks. Um, but we do see a lot of injuries that are caused by sharks where the turtle still survives. They're able to recover from that injury and there are a ton of great sea turtle hospitals and rehab centers that take in these turtles from all of these issues to help rehabilitate them so they can be re-released back into the wild. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our activity today. Um, so this is something you guys can definitely do at home with me. So behind me here, I'll bring it up a little closer. I have a makeshift sea turtle nest. So that mom turtle is gonna come onto the beach and she digs with her back flippers, kind of this upside down light bulb shape uh, pit where she's going to deposit on average around 120 eggs. Of course, that varies a little bit. Um, so I do have 100 ping pong balls in here that are labeled with their numbers. You can see that there. Um, now their eggs are roughly about this size, shape, and color. Um, the only difference is sea turtle eggs are going to be leathery. Again, they use that little egg tooth called a caruncle to dig their way out of that leathery shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly pull we'll do three eggs today from this nest. And what you guys can do at home is go ahead and write down, you can do three numbers as well. You can do four, five, six. You can write down as many numbers as you want. Um, any numbers between one and a hundred, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I have my little egg carton here. So I'm gonna randomly pull three eggs. So I pulled my three eggs, so you guys make sure you have your numbers written down for me. So the numbers that I pulled were 33, 47, and eight. 
So those are my numbers. And what we're gonna be exploring today is we're gonna see if the eggs I pulled from this nest survive all the way to adulthood, okay? Um, it's really tough for a sea turtle. We learned about that through all the threats that they face and the odds of them surviving from that egg all the way to adulthood is pretty slim because they do face so much out in the wild. So we're gonna see if I'm lucky enough that I make it to adulthood from that nest and we're gonna see if you guys do it as well, okay? So we are gonna start with stage one. So we pulled our eggs out. Again, that mom is depositing those into that sand pit. She's gonna be covering that sand pit back up with some sand and head right back out to the ocean. So we're gonna see who survived past stage one. So I have a list of numbers here. If you see your numbers listed on this sheet, it means you did not survive past the egg stage. So maybe a raccoon came along, dug it up, maybe you got washed out by a storm. So I want you guys to pause it and you guys can check and then we're gonna see if I made it. So I have number eight, which is on here. So unfortunately, number eight did not survive past stage one. I'm not off to a good start. I have number 47. So let's see, I don't see that one on here. So 47 made it, we're still doing okay. And then I have number 33, which I see on here. So unfortunately, two out of my three eggs already did not make it past stage one, which is fine, it happens, we understand. Um, so again, you guys can pause this and make sure um, you guys get a good idea to see if you guys made it past stage one or not. So next up, stage two. So stage two, we've made it past our egg stage and we're making our way to that water and we're gonna be considered a hatchling now. Um, and I'm gonna be trying to head all the way out to the mid-Atlantic to that Sargasso Sea where I can feed on some nice yummy fish and some algae. So let's see who made it past stage two. So if you guys see your number on this sheet, it means you did survive past stage two. Now I know um, the other sheet, you didn't survive if you saw yours, but we're switching up this time. If you see your number on here, you did survive. So I have one egg left. We talked about number 47. So let's see. So 47 is not on our list here. So unfortunately, all three of my eggs, we didn't make it too far, but that's fine. It happens. Um, so again, you guys can pause it to see if you guys made it past stage two. Now we have stage three. So again, this is between ages like one through eight, sometimes 10 years old. We're gonna be doing a lot of growing during this time because we're gonna be feeding a lot out in that open ocean. So now we're gonna see who made it past stage three. So if you see your number on this sheet, it means you survived stage three. Um, so you are now moving past that juvenile stage into that sub-adult stage. So like I mentioned, all of mine unfortunately did not make it, um, but hopefully some of you guys are moving on to that sub-adult. So stage four of that life cycle, we're gonna be a sub-adult. And so we're in those late teens, sometimes moving into those early 20s, um, and we're gonna be moving towards larger prey items because we have that really strong beak. We can break through things like whelks and conchs and snails. Um, so we're gonna be doing a lot more growing during this sub-adult age. Now the odds are getting slimmer and slimmer as we go. So stage four, if you guys have one of these numbers, you survived past that subadult stage. Um, so again, this is extremely hard to do. We had 100 eggs in that nest, and so we're trying to see who makes it all the way to adulthood. And then finally, we have stage five, adults. So this is where they're gonna be reaching that reproductive maturity, um, heading back to beaches with their females to lay their eggs, and they're gonna be starting that 
whole cycle all over again. So of course, we mentioned extremely hard to be a sea turtle. So if you got this number, you made it all the way to adulthood, okay? Now, I do wanna explain a little bit. So we pulled those eggs from one nest. And you know, we mentioned how one egg made it all the way to adulthood, okay? But we also have to think about there are thousands and thousands of nests that are being laid every single summer. Um, and so we're having all of those eggs, okay? So this is just meant to represent one single nest and the odds of that turtle making it all the way to adulthood. Um, so even though the odds are not always in the favor of the sea turtle, um, we still do see a lot of them making it to adulthood and coming back to those beaches and laying those nests, which is a great thing. Um, and we talked about with those threats, there are a lot of human factors. So there are things we can do at home and in our everyday life to help conserve these species. So of course, eliminating single use plastic products is a huge thing. Um, we don't want those entering their environment where they get entangled or ingest those items. That is not great for our sea turtles. Um, again, if you're on boats, making sure we're obeying boating laws and slowing down, especially during those summer months. And if you ever get the chance to visit those organizations, those sea, uh, sea turtle rehab centers and hospitals, they do great work. Um, a lot of educational opportunities there, and you can definitely learn more about that aspect of sea turtle conservation. And they do great things to help rehab those turtles so they can be re-released back into the wild one day. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed our activity today. This is something you guys can do at home. If you guys wanna play this video over, pick some new numbers, make up your own numbers, feel free to do so. And if you guys wanna join us next Thursday, I'll be posting another video. We're gonna be talking about birds and the adaptations of their beaks. Um, so if you guys wanna come back to our Facebook page then, I'll see you then. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and weekend, um, and we'll see you then. Bye guys.